Hi everyone, welcome to lecture 21. In this lecture, we're gonna cover moons, especially the moons in the outer solar system that may be places where life could exist. In the first part of this lecture, in this particular video, I'm gonna talk about moons, how they form, what they are, and what the general uh, array of moons looks like within our solar system. So as probably all of you are familiar, a uh, moon is a natural object that orbits a planet. We have a moon, you can see it in the sky, it's one of the larger moons in our solar system, even though Earth is not one of the larger planets in our solar system, which makes it a little bit unusual. But there are moons orbiting other planets as well. Here are some images of two moons that are shown orbiting other planets. So over here on the left is the, the Pluto system. So this is Pluto in the center here. And this moon that goes around it is Charon, its large moon. This uh, image is being taken by the New Horizons spacecraft as it was traveling towards Pluto, which is why both Pluto and Charon and the distance between them seems to be getting larger as time goes on, because the spacecraft was moving towards them and coming closer and closer until it could see them. Over here on the right is an image from the Kepler telescope of the planet Neptune. You can see Neptune over here is this very bright object. And it has this moon that's seen faintly orbiting around it. It's going to turn back around and you can see this moon going around and around. That's the moon Triton. If you look carefully, there's another moon traveling with it over here. That's the moon Nereid. So where do moons come from? How do they form? And what can that tell us about whether or not they would be good environments for life to live on? So as we've talked about earlier in this course, one possibility for how moons form is through giant impacts. So consider the collision of two planets, say a planet like Earth, and then a smaller planet, maybe the size of Mars. If you get the right impact, such as a glancing impact, you can blast off material from the surface of that planet into orbit. And that material can eventually coalesce into a larger, uh, into, a, into a large moon-like object, kind of like the one we have around Earth. And we think for this reason that this is how Earth's moon may have formed. Another way that you might form moons is kind of an analogy to how you form planets. So if you remember back to our lectures about planet formation, planets form in disks. And you can see an image of one of these disks here from the ALMA Observatory. This is the HL Tau disk. So you have a star in the center, and then you have these rings in the disk, which may indicate where planets are forming. So you may have a planet here, you may have a planet here, you may have a planet here. In the same way, it's possible that planets, and actually likely that planets, do similar things. So if you zoom in on one of these planets, you might find that one of these planets has a disk that looks very much like the disks that we see around stars with Alma. And at the center of this disk is a planet, and further out, there are moons that are starting to coalesce using basically the same processes as we see for the formation of planets. This is the kind of thing that would give you moons that are in a relatively flat configuration, just like how the planets in our solar system are in a relatively flat configuration. So here's the video which shows an example of a simulation of this process going on. This is showing the formation of moons around Jupiter. So Jupiter's here in the center, and these dots are millimeter-sized dust grains. And as time goes on in the simulation, you'll start to see them forming these patterns and these rings, and they'll start to coalesce together. So over time, you eventually get this conglomeration of many, many uh, small bodies that can then start to stick together, kind of like how we talked about uh, when the formation of planets. And if you evolve this over time, you can start to see that some of these uh, conglomerations start to pick up and form together. And when you do this, you can start to see moons beginning to form. So these different uh, uh, lines, these different uh, groups of lines together are the forming moons. So in this case, this moon here, this gray conglomeration will eventually form into something that's like the moon Io around Jupiter. And another moon like this will eventually form into the moon Europa around Jupiter. So it's very close analogy to how we think planets might form around uh, stars outside of the sun. And finally, there's another way that you can have these moons form. So over here in the right corner, imagine there is a moon. And it's not necessarily a moon. It could be an asteroid. It could be something else. But this moon 
is not necessarily orbiting the planet yet, but because it wanders too close and interacts gravitationally with the planet, say Jupiter and other moons around it, it can actually become captured and it can actually start orbiting that planet even though it didn't start out that way. So as you can see up here, eventually, originally it was just kind of moving along through space you know, as it normally would, but then its gravitational interaction ended up letting it get caught by Jupiter. This is the third way you can form moons. We call this the gravitational capture of moons. So we have three different ways of forming moons and they all can produce moons with relatively distinct compositions. So if you have a moon that formed in the similar way do we think planets form, so moons that formed in a disk, these will basically do the same thing that planets do when they're formed. So the ones that are forming in these disks will depend greatly on what the temperature of the disk is. So if you have moons that formed in a circumplanetary disk, as we call it, around a planet like Jupiter, and they're at the location of Jupiter, and Jupiter is cold enough that there's ice in solid form, then these moons will likely have a large fraction of ice, just like planets far away from the star will have a large fraction of ice in their compositions. On the other hand, if you have moons that form via impacts, those are likely going to mostly be made up of the same things the two impacting objects were created from. And in the case of Earth, they're likely going to be made up of the outer layers of the Earth. So Earth's moon, we think, was formed by a grazing impact. Uh, a body came in and hit at a glancing blow and mostly knocked off crust material and mantle material from the Earth, not necessarily material from the core. And that's what caused the moon to form. So the moon formed out of this primarily crust material, not the more dense material that was already at the center of the Earth. And finally, if you're looking at moons that were captured, their compositions could be pretty much anything because those compositions really depend on where the moons originated, not where they happen to be right now. These moons could have been asteroids, they could have been Kuiper Belt objects, they could have been comets, they could have been moons from another planet that were ejected. So really it's hard to know or predict what moons are made of if they were captured in this mechanism. So now I'm going to give a tour of the moons in the solar system. I'm just going to march through the planets and talk about the moon systems around each of them. So the inner two planets, Mercury and Venus, neither of them have any moons. The closest moon to the sun in our solar system is our moon, which orbits Earth. We have one relatively big moon. Surprisingly, it's one of the largest moons in the solar system, as I said, even though Earth is not one of the largest planets. So it's the fifth largest moon in the solar system. It's about 27% the size, the physical extent of Earth, but it's only about 1% the mass. And part of the reason it has low mass is just because when you have something that's much smaller in one dimension, if you look for the mass, it's a three-dimensional quantity. So there's a lot more material uh, in a much bigger object than there is a much smaller one but also it's a little bit less dense. It's made up of more lightweight materials because it doesn't primarily have the uh, iron core material that we have from the earth. Our moon has no atmosphere and it has some trace amounts of water on the surface, but otherwise it's pretty barren. And as I mentioned earlier, and as we talked about earlier in this course, earth's moon likely formed by a giant impact. So moving on to the next planet in our solar system is Mars. Mars has two small moons called Phobos and Deimos. They're very small, they have no atmosphere, and they're likely captured asteroids. And you can tell that they look like asteroids. They're not necessarily shaped like round planets. They're not big enough for their gravitational forces to essentially mold them into spherical objects like the planets and the minor planets in our solar system. In fact, they're so small that if I put them to scale on top of a map of Madison, they're roughly the size of our city. So these are not necessarily big objects at all for uh, comparison with typical other astronomical objects that we think about. So now moving on to the outer solar system is where most of the moons in our system exist. Jupiter has a lot of moons. It has 
79 total moons and four really big important ones. These were the first moons discovered by Galileo back in the 1600s. And these are called the Galilean moons and they're really important. We'll talk more about some of them in detail. Generally, gr Jupiter has different groups of moons. It has these big famous Galilean moons that orbit close in. These moons likely formed uh, by accretion in the protoplanetary in a pro circumplanetary disk just in the same way that planets form around stars which is why they all kind of orbit in the same direction then there's another group further out that seem more likely to have been formed by capture because these planets don't these moons don't necessarily orbit all in the same direction so the fact that we see these orderly moons big orderly moons close into jupiter and more randomized scattered moons further out implies that they formed in different ways. So these big moons close in probably have a good bit of water in their compositions just based on what we know about what's in disks at the distance of Jupiter from the Earth because Jupiter's far enough that in those disks water will be in solid form. Moving on to Saturn, Saturn has a large number of moons as well. So far, we know of 82 of them. And I want to note for all of these uh, planets in the outer solar system, while we know of a lot of moons already, almost certainly there are more out there that we just haven't detected yet because they're far away and relatively small and hard to see with our telescopes. But almost certainly there's more moons around these objects. So Saturn has a similar story. The inner moons are orderly and they likely form in a disk. It turns out that these moons are orbiting in the same plane as the rings, and probably the rings are due to remnants of moons that were previously destroyed and ground up into the beautiful ring disk uh, structures that we see. But again, as you go further out in Saturn's system, you can see that the outer moons have these orbits that are just scattered and chaotic. It looks like a bird's nest. This is again what we expect if these moons were captured asteroids or captured other moons or captured other small bodies from the solar system. Moving on to Uranus. Uranus has 27 moons twin, uh, and almost certainly has more. And again, similar story. The ones that are close in are orbiting kind of in the plane. And we think that they might likely formed in these circumplanetary disks, whereas the ones that are further out are more randomly scattered. It's harder to see the ones around Uranus that are more far out because they're typically smaller and Uranus is far away from us. So there's probably more of them out there, probably a system more similar to the ones we see around Jupiter and Saturn. We just haven't been able to look with our telescopes carefully enough to find them. And same story again for Neptune. Fewer moons total, but still a lot. And almost certainly there's some that we're missing. And again, the big ones that are close in tend to be orbiting all in the same planes, which would indicate that they formed in this circumplanetary disk. Planets are not the only objects that can have moons. Minor planets and dwarf planets can as well. So here's an image of the Pluto system. Pluto, as I already mentioned, has one big moon, Charon which is almost nearly, almost as large as Pluto itself. But in addition to Charon, uh, it has several other smaller moons and you can see them in this image here. What they've done here is they've adjusted the contrast to make Pluto and Charon appear smaller and less bright compared to these others. Because if you could see these at their full brightness, they would totally overwhelm everything else in the image. But you can see that there's other moons, in particular Styx, Kerberos, Hydra, and Nix. And again, all of these moons seem to be in some sort of orderly configuration. Pluto is probably small enough that it didn't necessarily have one of these circumplanetary disks. So perhaps there is another way to bring these moons into the configuration that we see them in now. Another dwarf planet called Eris has a moon called Dysnomia. Only one of the moons in this system so far, although it's possible there are more that we just haven't found yet. Another system is called Haumea. It has uh, two moons right here, and you can see them orbiting around each other. Uh, if you take multiple images at the moment, this is just showing a single image. And sometimes there are even asteroids that orbit one another. This is an example of a binary asteroid imaged by the Arecibo Observatory in Puerto Rico. 
you can see that these asteroids are orbiting around each other. If you were to take a longer exposure and keep observing this for longer, you would see them make a complete revolution.